Hello, this is Jonathan Mallory at DroneMinds.com and in this video I'm going to be using my DJI Phantom 3 and a computer program called Agisoft or Agisoft, depending on how you want to pronounce it to turn images of this into something like this. Okay, so this is Barnby Barrage um, in North Yorkshire, and this is the River Derwent running up the middle, and this is the uh, River Ouse running across from horizontally across the top, and this um, Barnby Barrage is a tidal lock that stops the tidal waters of the River Ouse coming into the River Derwent and raising and lowering the water of the Derwent. It also helps stop some of this brown silty water getting into the uh, River Derwent and keeping it clean for the people down river who like to go up and down the boats. Um, so I'm going to make a model of this, this uh, barrage, this lock and the uh, ground around it using my DJI Phantom 3 which geotags the images for you which is really good because it helps make the uh, model a little more accurate. You don't have to use geotagged images in Agisoft but it helps. Um, obviously I'm not going to make the model from this video I'm going to fly around and take pictures from uh, each different angle. So I've flown around the uh, the lock and, and ground, taking images at different angles. I haven't taken many images, there's only about 10, just, just to make this shorter. If you're doing this properly to get a high res model, you'd take a lot more pictures than this. And that's it all the way around. You take a lot more pictures than that, probably getting a bit closer as well. And these are all looking more or less straight down. However, even looking straight down, the camera has a field of view, so it's not looking straight down like a, a, a laser beam. It's looking outwards like this. So you'll still get some light coming in from the sides of things, from the sides of objects and buildings. But if you wanted to get a lot more detail, you could you could fly down to below the level of the buildings or objects you wanted to get into it and point the camera up and go around the sides as well but for this i've just taken about uh, 10 simple pictures looking pretty much straight down with the uh, field of view of the camera capturing the sides right so i'll uh, go ahead and open uh, agisoft now and uh, so the first thing is you go to workflow. I'll just just talk about Agisoft a bit as well. This there are you can download a, a free trial of this if you want to give this a go, and they have like a uh, cheapo version. I look at, if I look at it on the website, so I confirm I know what I'm talking about. So it's called Agisoft Photo Scan. You can uh, Google it and go straight to downloads. So you can download it straight away and use it, I'm not sure, I think yeah, 30 days, you can use it for a month, either on Apple, Mac or, or, uh, or Linux. And um, the price isn't so bad actually, a lot of these uh, uh, 3D uh, modelling uh, programmes are really expensive. And this one is still expensive if you want to buy the professional version, but you can get the standard version, which is the one I'm using, which is only $179. And it does a pretty good job. And the uh, professional version just has, um, it, it's more for high-end industrial work and uh, using uh, real-time kinetic satellite ground control points, which are really accurate satellite positions where you want the... Uh, the model to be like millimeter or centimeter perfect where this where you know where you want the uh up every gradient and uh and bump in the model and to be as accurate as possible but for our purposes the standard edition is very good and it would do for most people i think so anyway that's the the website go back to the model 
So the first part of call in the uh, program is to go to, I'm not going to go through all the menus and explain everything. This will just be a quick how-to really. If you want to download the trial, just follow these steps. There isn't that much to it really. So on the workflow, you're going to add photos or add folders. You can just add a whole folder, but I'll, I'll add photos. So these are my photos I've taken that I just showed you. There's actually 12 altogether. I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. So I can just select them all, open them. Okay, so the, uh, I've actually got the uh, pane with the phone photos on uh, switched off, but on by default when you get it, you should have a a window down here with the photos in them so these look like they're all okay they usually have like a a little mark next to here coming what it is like a little alert sign if if they can't be used but so it's going to be using all of these so back to the workflow again you pretty much follow the list down more things appear the more things you do so we can align the photos next you can do high medium or low i'll just leave it on high cause might as well line them as well as possible so obviously this is in real time um if you had a lot more photos on each of these steps are going to take a lot longer so the better your computer is the more memory you can have i've got 32 gigabytes of memory in this computer and the uh, uh, fastest processor you can get if you can get the latest i7 processor or, or the best you can afford and the and a totally banging graphics card the the more intense you're able to do this and the uh, more accurate you'll be able to do it and the quicker it'll do these steps I mean that didn't take too long so these blue points here are where the program's estimated where my uh, DJI Phantom camera was and which way it was pointing you can turn these on and off so these blue things, they're actually called cameras. So it says show cameras, unshow cameras. So these are my 12 camera points. You can highlight them on here to so you can see which picture it's getting the information from. So this is a fairly basic point cloud at the moment, which you can't really see much from. This is the, well, this is the uh, main river who's here. And this is the uh, river derwent in the barrier somewhere in here so the next thing to do is refine this by going to uh, build dense cloud which means it's going to build a uh, uh, lots of these dots at the different heights taken from the photos so this is one that makes a this will make a huge difference to how long it's going to take so if i put it on lowest it'll do it in a few seconds if i put it on ultra high it might take all night so uh, for this video I'll try it on medium and see how long it's going to take so I've gone through up to 1% in uh, nearly 10% in about 10 seconds so this maybe won't take quite so long I'll still uh, pause it though so you don't have to watch all this so we're just about done now making the uh, dense cloud so it looks like it hasn't changed but in actual fact it has you just need to go up to the menu here this is on the uh, not so dense cloud the point cloud the original point cloud if you want to see the dense cloud you click on the next one and then you'll see loads more detail you can just turn the cameras off so you can see them better you can uh, use your mouse wheel to uh, zoom in and out. Now, like I said, if I'd, if I'd done this uh, on high or ultra high, there'd be more points and be more accurate. But this isn't so bad. You can look all the way round it. Get right in there. Now, the next thing is to make a build a mesh I'll leave that on on the settings it's already on now mesh is like a kind of a, like a turning the model so it's got made up of polygons beneath the points and building these uh, dense point clouds and meshes uh, useful 
for all kinds of different reasons. They're useful for other people who make um, computer models in uh, computer aided design programs. And also, more recently, you can uh, export some of these these models. You can export them in different formats. So you could even make a computer printout, a 3D print of this uh, topographical map and then even paint it, use it on a desk for like an architectural model or something just to show the landscape. You can uh, do this here to make landscapes like valleys, mountains. You can make uh, landscapes for uh, using in games like Warhammer or something like that if you wanted to. You know, tabletop battle games and make models based on real life topography of uh, places by going and scanning them. In fact, that might even be a money maker selling uh, uh, real life uh, battlefield models to uh, tabletop gamers. So if anybody gets rich, um, please send me 10% for coming up with the idea. So that's the uh, the uh, mesh done. And I'll show you what that looks like. So it's got different colours. It's kind of weird looking. Kind of looks a bit like it if you'd taken all the water away or something. Like that. Then the uh, last thing on the workflow is to uh, build texture. And the, uh, the process of building texture is actually, again, made better by how many photographs you've got. And, and if you've got all the angles, it's actually using the colours and bits of the photograph to slap onto the sides of its the point cloud and mesh that it's made. The polygon mesh is going to slap the textures, the uh, bits of imagery from the actual images themselves, and try and make a nice model. Now this book doesn't have any real effect on exporting it for 3D printing as such, unless they uh, come up with a way to uh, colour the uh, 3D prints in the future. Well, I'll show you something else cool about this, what reasons to do this properly. So that's the texture done. So now if we click on this uh, pyramid with a little tree on it, you see the uh, full textured version. Now anywhere where you've got holes in like this, this grey piece along here, that's because um, the model didn't have enough data because all if you look at all my pictures they're all uh, they're all pointing towards this so this is the main feature and you can actually fill this in with different colors if you want but i'll leave that i'm not going to start doing all that kind of stuff you can also uh, um cut this out as well you can you can trim it to just uh, just within this bit here, if you wanted to see this, you can zoom into this as well. So like I said, if you wanted to make this more accurate, you would take more photographs and get more angles and uh, in the workflow, build the uh, dense cloud on ultra high. But depending on your computer, how fast it is, it could take, uh, you know, literally all night, sometimes more like 24 hours, 36 hours even. The uh, rendering can get really uh, labour intensive for your computer, but for a lot of people's purposes, this, as it is, would be very impressive and very useful, I think. Now, the other thing you can do, I'll just save that. It's another model I made earlier. Transfer 3, boundary barrage, put in a folder called model because it saves a bit of data in there. Call it boundary barrage so I know what it is. And it saves it as a photoscan project file dot psz or z. Right, so we've got our model now, so you can 
just leave it in here if you want or you can export it before I export it I will talk a bit more about these uh, the pictures that you take though now what you need to do to make the uh, software work better it's not just this software any software if you're using a uh, pix4d or a cute 3d there's lots of different software you can use if you look at the blog post there's some mentioned on there but it helps the software if uh, the photos are in a series and and if the uh, the following photo has lots of elements from the previous photo in it so by the time you get to here this photo doesn't look look like this photo but if you go through them all the elements of the last one in the next one all the way around and then depending on the accuracy you, you require you can put more of the previous photo in I mean some people recommend uh, that there's 80% of the previous photo there's an 80% overlap 80% overlap between each picture so whichever way you take your pictures, if you've gone around like I have, or if you've gone up and down in a lawnmower pattern, go through your pictures afterwards and make sure if they aren't in a sequence, one after another, just rename them, renumber these numbers so that they come in a sequence, one after the other. And that way the software knows which photo goes next, which which ones join together. And it will help it align the different parts, you know, like these corners. Align the corner on this picture with the same corner in this picture. And it'll be able to, you know, tell which bits go together. But if they're all kind of out of sequence, if you did like a, a flight up here going one picture, two picture, three pictures... And then you went back over here and did one picture, two pictures, three pictures. There'd be a big leap from this picture to that one. And you might get an error here. You might not know how these pictures join together. And you might start joining them together this way and miss pictures out. And you'll get little triangle, yellow triangles in here saying this picture couldn't be used because it doesn't know where it's supposed to go. So try and do them all in an order. And if they don't come out in an order, renumber them so that they are in an order. So there's always an overlap one picture to the next anyway that's all that's that's that so uh the last thing to do is to uh, export your model so you can either export the points or export the model depending on what you want to do with it you can export it in different formats the wave from objects 3ds um, model and uh, some of these are different 3D modeling programs that animators use, and some of them are like architectural programs. So, uh, depending on what you want to use it for, will depend on what you export it as. One of the coolest things is uh, being able to export as a PDF. So, if I export this, call it Bambi Barrage, and save. So, it's going to uh, come up with these and you can just leave it like that if you want um, you can look deeper into the uh, Agisoft website if you want to see what these uh, different things mean you can write your own text in here it usually says generated by Agisoft but you can change it to uh, generated by um, Sarah Smith or copyright by Sarah Smith anything you want you can put in here um, so I'm going to get generated by drawnminds.com and uh, press OK. So then, <clears throat> if I go to the folder, this is where it's been exported to. I've got a PDF file of my model. Now if you open this and try to open this and you get nothing but a blank page, you need to uh, update your Adobe Reader to the latest uh, version. If you've got an old version, it won't display... 3d models like this but if you've got the latest version or anything from about 10 upwards it should be fine and you're supposed to update Adobe Reader all the time anyway it's one of those things that's always nagging you isn't it on your computer so isn't that cool so in the latest versions of Adobe Reader not only can you uh, look at the model you can manipulate it zoom in and out with the mouse wheel 
and do a lot of the things you can do actually in the uh, software. So if I did a, a really high res version, it's nice and detailed, and I was doing this for a client, say like like an environmental agency or something. I if I was, I might have been, I might have done a uh, thing of the river bank or the water. You can see, you can even see the detail of the how far the silt's coming into the river, river Derwent here, and then you can uh, look at it from uh, all angles, zoom in and out. And use this in their own presentation, put it in a uh, overhead projector and use it in a board meeting, which is, I think is pretty cool. And then everybody knows PDF, so you can send it to anybody. Okay, so there we have it. That's uh, making a computer model from photographs taken by the uh, DJI Phantom 3 Professional. You can use the uh, DJI Phantom Advanced or any of the other Phantoms. Uh, you could use a DJI Inspire, you could have used a Unique Q500 or even a 3D Robotics if you're uh, that way inclined. The only problem is with some of the others is they're not geotagging the images, which uh, isn't 100% an issue because you can use non-geotagged images in Agisoft and some of the programs. But when they are geotag, the uh, the model is more accurate. But you can still definitely use a model without geotag, and you still get some pretty cool results. So don't worry if you don't have a drone that doesn't geotag. Still give it a go anyway. Agisoft is free to download. I think Pix4D has a, a free trial to download as well, and Acute 3D has a free version or a free trial something. If you were uh, have a look on the forums where I've uh, we'll be posting this video to go with a, a blog post I did a while back. You can uh, see a list of some of the programs there and a bit more information or you can ask your own questions on the uh, forum post itself. So if you want to do that would be great. I'll uh, promise to answer any questions you have or you can uh, ask some questions below on here on YouTube or you can uh, subscribe if you haven't already i hope you will give me a thumbs up pass it around let other people see it i don't want these uh techniques to be secret i think everybody should be doing this sort of stuff and a lot of people trying not to tell other people about these things and i like to get this information out there let's get some more 3d models some nice aerial photographs from all our cool drone footage so uh thanks for watching uh, catch you next time